Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 13 for Defend and Publish podcast. And this week's theme is pandemic moms and academic writing. This week, we're going to focus on writing with kids as part of a two-part series. So next week, we'll focus on getting some writing done without kids. But for pandemic moms out there, and actually any academic parents, we have lots of strategies and tips for you. So um, those of you that are watching this on a video, I'm going to share a screen. But for those of you that are listening to it, you don't need to um, worry about seeing the slides for this one. So it'll be, they're posted always with our show notes at Defend and Publish Podcasts. So you can see them, but this, this is totally is listenable if you're on your commute or listening in the car. So we're going to focus on part, uh, part one, which is writing with kids. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this is because like many of you, um, I am an academic parent. I do have two children. Um, one of my children is in high school. So this is kind of a different thing with a high school student. She's 15. And then I also have a 10 year old daughter who needs lots of attention and likes to have somebody around and she's not going to just sit in her room and play without me. <laughs> so I came up with this idea thinking about it from how I, how was I going to get some work done? during the pandemic when I knew I had a younger daughter at least who wanted to do um, a lot of things with me. Plus I was like many of you doing homeschooling and, and some of these other things. So it's very hard to get your own writing done when you're thinking about say fourth grade social studies. So um, what we're gonna do today is talk through a couple of tips that really worked for me. And then I also gathered some information from um, academic parents who have children that are toddlers, uh, you know, children that maybe can't do things unsupervised yet. And so I've got a little bunch of tips. Hopefully some of them will work for you and some are definitely tried by me. So hopefully they will help. Um, one of the things that for those of you that are thinking about um, trying to get some writing done with children, I think it's really important to remember that a lot of the academic advice out there really focuses on how everybody's being so productive during the pandemic. It does seem like there's sort of two sides to this where um, some people are getting a lot of academic writing done. And then a lot of us who have homeschooling and other things going on, we might feel that we're far behind. Um, I just want to put this out there, but that is probably not the case. Many of us are behind for all sorts of reasons including elder care or being sick ourselves. So um, what we're looking at during this podcast and through a lot of our, our programming that we offer through Defend and Publish is just how to move forward. So forget what happened before, just start moving forward. And so these strategies hopefully will help you get some writing done um, this week if you find some things that will work for you. So one of the things that I mentioned is that, you know, doing write, academic writing during the pandemic is a little bit of a challenge. There's a lot of reasons why that is. We've just talked about a couple of them, but um, I think the other thing maybe it's important to mention is that uh, just accepting this, like you cannot be doing your job maybe at the same level that you were doing it before. Um, but that's not to say there aren't some really great strategies to move you forward. And those are the things that we're going to talk about now. So um, I will just a little caveat with this episode, I will recommend buying a couple things, but some things are very cheap. Um, but you definitely don't have to buy things to make it work. These are just all things that worked for me that I thought would be great to share. Um, so one of the things that I ended up doing at the start of the pandemic when everything was closed down, um, both my children were homeschooling, um, they were doing remote learning, but a lot of it was the kind of thing where they had to watch videos and answer questions and things like that. And we kind of had these empty afternoons open, at least at the start of the pandemic. And one of the things I ended up doing was getting one of those kids subscription boxes. Um, they're from a company called Kiwi Crates. I swear I don't work for them, um, but they have all different kinds. There's ones for science kids kids and there's some for very young children, you know, that want to do something. I mean, even toddlers or kindergartners can do some of these crafts in there. Um, and the one that I picked was a doodle crate. It was for ages nine to 13. I have a little picture of it on the slide, but if you just type in doodle crate and kiwi crates, you can find it kiwi like K-I-W-I. And one of the things I like this is that these crafts are designed to last around a half hour, 45 minutes, which is perfect for getting some writing done. They, uh, they have a little QR code where you can play a little video where someone else explains how to do the craft and they have a really nice instruction booklet. And so one of the pictures that's on my slides right now is like a little, um, a little garden where my daughter got to make these little felt flowers in a garden. So it was a little bit more exciting than a run of the mill craft. She was excited to get mail. But the other thing is I set up as part of getting these subscription boxes is that when one of those boxes comes, 
that's a time that I'm going to get some writing done. So I would set her up with the craft and then I was able to knock out 45 minutes, sometimes an hour worth of writing. So very, um, very worth it. There's tons of kids subscriptions out there. I didn't think I'd be a big fan of those, but I, I really am because it was a good way to hold the box and then use it when I needed it. Like when I really needed to get something done. Um, another thing that I ended up doing was just kind of restocking my art supplies. And I mean, you can do this so cheaply. There's dollar, dollar tree palettes. Um, um, of watercolors. There's a picture of one on a slide, restocking some paper. Um, that was another investment since we weren't going out to eat as much or doing anything else. I just kind of laid into the art supplies um, to get things like that um, for my younger daughter to do. And actually my older daughter enjoyed doing some of that too. Um, so certainly that was a good win. Um, and again, during the time that she had some art supplies, it was a thing where I need to get some writing done. I'm going to set out some art supplies for you. Why don't you work on creating your, you know, your painting or whatever it is. If I got her yarn or, you know, things to glue, like glitter things all over a paper or something like that. I would say, why don't you work on what you're working on? I'm going to work on what I'm working on. And in a half an hour, we'll compare notes. And that was about the right amount of time for a then nine-year-old, um, a wiggly nine-year-old <laughs> who didn't want to be, you know, kind of working on her own for a while. Um, another thing that I would recommend that was amazing find was at five below, they have all these kids crafts kits and I actually just put a picture of a glitzy chemistry set on screen. Um, I know people have lots of opinions about Dollar Tree and five below, but for moms, we're super busy. I'll tell you, this thing got me three hours of writing, no questions asked, and it did not make a mess. So it was a, it was a win in my book, but um, she ended up, my daughter ended up getting to make, I think some perfumes and some other stuff, but there was a little bit of science involved and I was kind of impressed. So that was a good way, a good use of $5 in my mind. And she's still using the stuff she made. Plus she could also talk about um, how she made things to her relatives and her friends and that. So it was just better than saying, okay, well, you're going to go in front of a screen while I'm getting my writing done, which is, I think the default that's always thrown at academic moms, like just put them in front of a screen when we know they're homeschooling and things on screens and they might not want to go on another one again. This was a great find and there's tons of other kits in there. Um, another one that I just saw, I'm not a big Pinterest person, but I was looking around for some other ideas and there's some wonderful parallels between um, preparing younger children to fly on long haul flights and all the different things on Pinterest and everywhere to keep kids busy. Um, but one of the ones I really liked and I put a screen a screenshot up on the, if you're watching this on YouTube, but just something about if you look up portable play sets and long haul flights, um, people do all kinds of stuff. They put things in like the Altoids mince boxes, the really tiny ones. I've seen um, shoe boxes but basically you're just make a make a kit for a child and have stuff to do in there. So I could totally see this working for somebody that's maybe a toddler um, past the choking stage, but still needs something, you know, new and exciting every week. You could just make your writing shoe box, you know, when you you need to write, put some new stuff in it every time. So they never know what they're going to get until they open it up. Um, I vaguely remember my mother doing something like this with me where she had a box of old buttons one time. There's a box of jewelry. Um, you know, what, I, there were some other things in there were like old scraps of fabric and things like like that. And it just is another way to get away from a screen, but get some writing done yourself. So um, I think this is one way to think about doing your own writing where your kids are also making something. But I also want to throw out the suggestion that um, I think so much of what we do as academic moms seems to like try to find writing time away from our kids, or at least do it and have them do something else. Um, I might throw the suggestion out there just to kind of close this podcast about involving your kids in your writing. So I would freely admit I'm, I'm the first to not do this with my children for a long time. I mean, they understand I write articles and books and things like that, and they know what I, I do. But um, for a book that I've just finished working on, it's going to be, it's called Rec Comp Moms, and it's about academic parenting and rhetoric and composition. But my kids knew it was kind of important to me. They knew I missed a deadline due to the pandemic and due to homeschooling. So I was very, I would talk to them about it and say, well, these are the things I worked on today. Um, yes, they are 10 and 15, so they could understand and they're a little bit older, but my younger daughter made me a bracelet that said right on it. That was like a motivational thing for me to wear every day. So I have a picture of it on the YouTube um, or on the screenshot if you're watching it on YouTube. But also um, I noticed, especially in Five Below, because I've been paying attention to that, there's tons of journals and pens and markers. And there's this really great set or uh, series out there from Andrea Pippins, who does a whole lot of um, really beautiful artwork and things like that. And has uh, a lot of the, um, a lot of 
kind of creative things that students or that that your children can do um, that they're really pretty. And so there's a picture of one on here where it's kind of it's an, a canvas art set where the the thing says shine and there's lots of ways to decorate it. So there's a way to kind of layer that art and writing together. And you can tell your children that you know it's writing time for me, it's writing time for you. So encourage them to do some journaling or some of their own work. Um, again, I think as academic moms, we're sometimes told to do our home, you know, kids should be doing homework when we're doing our work, but we all know that does not work because you have to explain the science worksheet or you have to help with the long division so you don't get anything done yourself. I like this a little bit better where you're not even pretending to try to help them with their homeschool, but you're saying, I'm a writer, you're a writer, and then you give them something to do. So I'm hoping that these uh, strategies are good suggestions for you, but I encourage you to share some more of those um, strategies with me at Christine at Defend and Publish. And also I wanna throw this out there that we are offering free webinars this month um, and next month. So if you wanna check out what's available, we do have one coming up um, very soon on setting your quarterly writing goals. And so if you wanna get some, kind of get back in the game of academic writing, no time like setting some new uh, writing goals and resolutions. So we're hoping you can join us for those. Happy writing everybody.